Good evening, my beautiful family. We're here to have a great conversation. Today is Sunday night and I made it <laughs> on time because I didn't set a time. So therefore I'm on time because there was no time set, but we're going to address the black community. We're going to have a conversation here about this whole talk about the women in their bonnets coming outside. We're going to examine some things with respect to that and how us having these public conversations can be damaging to our community. So we're going to talk about that. I know a lot of you guys don't mind, you know, bringing up all the, all the stuff we apparently do that's so wrong and so bad. I know a lot of us don't mind doing it. We love talking about this stuff publicly and not every last one of us are examining how it hurts us, but I'm going to show you guys some things. So this evening, I'm also going to show you a video from a white guy addressing the black women and bonnet situation. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to just highlight some things that Tariq Nasheed said in his video regarding black women wear bonnets. So we're going to highlight that. We're going to talk about that a little bit. I'm also going to talk about some things that we are doing that is hurting our community. And maybe we might want to consider doing things differently. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about this whole classism that goes on in our community. That's how we're going to really end this conversation about the classism. But I want to first address what's been going on around this whole bonnet thing. And I know that people already had this conversation. Y'all know me. I like to just look into a lot of things. I like to see what's out there. And I did. I took my time and I uncovered a video that I want to show you guys of a white guy talking about black women wearing bonnets. Right? So, I mean, we can't get mad at him having a conversation. He didn't just pick it out the air. Somebody wrote him to see what he had to say about black women wearing bonnets. So let me just go ahead and give my greetings. And I want to say good evening to all of you late nighters. I know we're not going to have a lot of people in the room tonight and that's okay. We don't need a lot of people tonight. You can always get it on the replay, but I wanted to come on. So I wanted to address this and I promised you guys I was going to get better about coming on. So share the video so that people who may not know that we're on will know that we're on. So share the video. All right. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe notification so that you can be notified when I am going live. And if you're on Facebook, like and follow the page so people can know that we're here. The more we engage family, the more Facebook and YouTube social media allows people to know that we are on. It's an algorithm thing. So we have to have support in black media. And that's going to require you guys to be sharing a video, conversing in the chat being engaged in this conversation. So let's have this conversation. Let's go ahead and get started. So a couple of people inboxed me and I was not going to talk about this issue whatsoever. Somebody said my skin is glowing. Is it glowing? You know, back in the days when I was younger, this is a late night conversation when I'm just addressing the black community. So y'all don't care about, you know, if I'm a little bit off center today. But back in the days when people used to say your face is glowing, that was an indication that you were pregnant. <laughs> Do y'all remember that, that that was just in my family? If you if you told somebody you seem to be glowing, the next question that came out their mouth, because you know how it is in a black community, you know how we are as black people. The next thing out their mouth is, you pregnant? <laughs> so every time I hear somebody say your face is glowing, my response is always, I ain't pregnant. So don't even ask me. <laughs> See, people are saying, yes, that's what they do. I be getting all sensitive, but I've learned not to say anything anymore because no, I know I'm not pregnant because that shop is closed. So thank you for saying my face is glowing. But let's go back to this conversation about this whole bonnet situation. See, everyone's talking about yes in my family. I told you I'm not the only one. Black people, we do some serious things. We do some different things. We do some different things. You dream of fish, you pregnant, right? Your face is glowing, you prank pregnant. If your behind is getting a little big or your hips are spreading and you a teenager, you having sex, right? This is, this is stuff that we say in our family. <laughs> 
it is so crazy the stuff we say i love my people i love and i love my people when they're honest too i laugh at some of them i talk about some of them too i ain't gonna lie but we're gonna be honest tonight we're gonna have an honest conversation because y'all know your asses are not innocent just like i'm not always innocent we're gonna have some honest conversations so a lot of you guys have been putting this video about monique and her addressing the bonnet wearing community and culture and i ignored it not that i was ignoring you for the people who was giving me the video but i was ignoring this conversation i didn't want to have the conversation because i just feel like is this productive do we really want to have this conversation in the public and then somebody sent me another video telling me to look at Tariq Nasheed's comment regarding the bonnet. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I did watch his video. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was laughing. And the reason why I was laughing is because I I think that there are some times where um, Tariq Nasheed makes some valid points and some good points. And, you know, I try not to shoot the messenger. I try to listen to what people have to say. And I go, okay, okay. If it's something that I know, I'll be like, yeah, or something that's not right in my head, I'll be like, mm, nah, you're a little bit wrong on that one. And I'll go and I'll references and I'll put a little marker so I can get the references and go back to the history where he might be a little bit wrong. And then there's other times where Tariq Nasheed is just being Tariq Nasheed. He's just being a jokes, a jokester. He's just um, snapping on people or, you know, he, he gets to rolling and going. And even though, you know, sometimes I'm there because people drop these videos in my box i don't necessarily go to his channel just to watch it people are letting me know and they're saying what do you think about this and nine of the ten times what they drop in my box i leave alone i don't say anything because even though we're all collectively trying to raise the consciousness in our community and we're all trying to get everybody to wake up and see things differently i don't respond because he's in his lane right he's in his lane he's talking about He's talking to his community. And when I say his community, I, I'm not talking about as us as a collective, but I think that we all know, right? We got to talk about psychographics here for a second. Bear with me, family. I know I'm going somewhere with this. Just bear with me. We all know that certain people gravitate to some of us, right? And we all have, we all have mixtures of audience that you know they may listen to Tariq Nashi, they may listen to Red Pill, they may listen to um Brother Polite, they may listen to Dr. Umar Johnson, they may listen to Vicky Diller, they may listen to Yvette Carnell, they might listen to Tone Talks, they might listen to Dr. Shauna, they might listen to my girl Michi, they might listen to a number of people. We know that that's there. And then we have sprinkles that go over like some people that might like me may not find interest in another person. Some people that likes Tariq Nasheed may not find interest in what I talk about, right? So we all have our own audiences. So typically when someone shares something with me from one of us that are out here doing the work or at least having the conversation around the work that needs to be done, if I'm not the audience of that person, sometimes I don't listen to it it depends on what the conversation is because some of the stuff for my ears, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong, but for my ears, it doesn't ring well. Right? So I, I pick and choose what I'm going to listen to. But if there's a message, I can look past all the other stuff and I can, I can, you know, listen to the message and not feel offended or not have to go on on a rampage about what somebody else said that I didn't like. That's that's not what I'm about. So with that being said, I listened to his video that he did on the bonnets. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Half the stuff that Tariq Nasheed was saying, I was cracking up. Not because I agree with it, because some of the stuff I totally did not agree with. I'm like, that is just Tariq Nasheed. But some of the stuff that he was saying, because he's just a joke, so Tariq Nasheed is just an ass. He's an ass. And it was hilarious. It was hilarious because he thinks like so many people in our community. All right? I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. He thinks like 
so many people in our community. So then I went back and I listened to Monique's message again. And I played it again because I wanted to really hear what she was saying. Now, I want to show you guys some things because y'all are aware of what Monique said, correct? Let me know in the chat if you guys are aware of what Monique said about the whole bonnet wearing community. I'm going to read to you guys her statement that she made in her video. I'm going to just read it to you. And I want to preference that for our conversation tonight. Just give me a second, family. We're going to take it a little bit slower. We're going to take a little bit slower today. So I hope you guys are okay with that because I want to make sure I'm not rushing through certain things because this conversation is going to be one of those conversations that's going to um, bother people. It just really is because we have a divide in our community. And my whole thing is this. I can care less if somebody, you know, want to have this conversation and private about the bonnet thing. But when I seen that white guy, and I'm going to show his video, when I seen him weighing on, weighing in on his opinion about the whole bonnet thing, I, mm, that's what made me decide, okay, I'm going to come on and I'm going to say something because I keep saying we have to be very careful with how we are having these public debates that can be scrutinized and weaponized against us. I hear what I'm saying, family? We have to be very, very careful how we are debating with each other publicly because I say it to you guys all the time and I'm going to say it again and I'm going to say it again and I'm going to say it again and again and again. We are in a fishbowl. And everybody is listening and watching what we are saying. Everybody is paying attention to our conversation. Everybody is, is judging us based on the information we are putting out there. Everyone sees what kind of conversations we're having that spark an interest, and then they're jumping on it. Not because, not because they, they really care about what we're going through. Not because they feel that they have something to add to the discussion, but because it helps them with their views. Because it seems like the stuff that we converse about, most of the stuff that we converse about, it seems like it goes viral and everyone picks it up. You know, and whether people are saying it out loud or not, people are listening. So Monique is quoted by saying, I've been seeing it not just talking about the bonnets. I've been seeing it not just at the airport. I've been seeing it at the store, at the mall. When did we lose our pride in representing ourselves? When did we slip away of let me make sure I'm presentable when I leave my home? I'm not saying you don't have pride, but the representation that you're showing someone will have to ask you to know if it if you have it is not to get a man it's just a representation of who of you my sweet babies so in other words y'all know about this right in other words what she what she's saying is let me just address this situation cuz i'm tired of going to the airport i'm trying i'm tired of seeing y'all look all ridiculous with bonnets on that's for the that's for the bedroom that's not for you to leave your house. Y'all coming outside looking like that. Y'all look like you you don't you're not pride. Like when did we lose our pride? So the first thing that came to my head was, who is the we she's talking about? Now I'm gonna ask you guys that in the chat. Who is the we she is talking about? Remember, this is this is addressing the black community, and this channel is all about us being critical in our thought process. Shout out to Audra for joining the channel. Thank you so much for that support. I love you for that. Who is the we she's referring to? Is it we as a collective? Right? Is Are we all responsible for what the next person is doing? So 
Doretha is saying black women. Jay Love is saying black women, right? So I know she's saying we, but again, okay, Chelsea, thank you, Chelsea. Chelsea's saying poor people. Now that goes right back to Tariq Nasheed's conversation because when he did his video, he, he didn't say it was right or wrong. He just said, listen, people wearing bonnets, and I'm paraphrasing. This is not his direct words. Y'all going to have to go back and, and listen to his video if you, if you care to know. But he was like, you know, people that wear bonnets, he goes, hey, listen, it don't bother me because I know like when I get out of my car and I'm walking around and I see somebody that's wearing bonnets, that just let me know, hey, <laughs> we in the ghetto. I'm in the ghetto. There's got to be some projects around here. So what he was implying is people who wear bonnets are ghetto. He drew a very clear distinction between him and ghetto people. And he was saying when he sees them with their bonnets and their raggedy, dirty slippers, this is what he's saying. And I'm paraphrasing, but he did use those words, right? He's basically saying, I ain't got nothing to do with me. So Superstar Bella saying black women as a collective is the we. Let me tell you guys how I get down. And I'm not saying you guys have to agree with me. We're having a conversation here. You know, I'm very interactive. This is about us having a conversation about the black community. Let me tell you how we get down. We're not all the same. So when somebody makes a comment about black women, it don't got nothing to do with me, right? If it falls into my category, then my ears will perk up. But if it doesn't fall into my category, it don't have anything to do with me. And the reason why I say that is because we have a, a long history of dividing each other. And we all do it. Nobody's exempt. We all do it. We divide ourselves based on color. Even when we're referring to somebody in our community as the light-skinned girl or the dark-skinned girl, you know who I'm talking about? The dark-skinned sister, she's a real dark, dark sister, right? This is how we refer to each other when it comes to color, right? Or no, you, you know who I'm talking about, the high yellow one, right? We, we, we make these statements. We say this and it just rolls off of our tongue so easily. And I wonder if any of us stop and think about what we're actually doing and what are we, what, what we are perpetuating when we have these conversations or if you don't sit your black ass down or get over here, blackie, like we, we say these things, we say these things and we're so comfortable perpetuating the division. We divide each other on education. If someone, if someone is doing something that we don't feel is appropriate or normal, whether we're from a lower class, a, a so-called middle class, we're going to talk about that in this video as well, a so-called middle class, a, a upper class, whatever the class is, we all say something about each other. You could be from a lower class and someone presents in front of you that maybe the person is formally educated. Maybe the person speaks a certain way and we are, we automatically divide ourselves from the person. We find issue and fault there. You ain't from around here. Well, you wouldn't even know what the struggle is. You ain't never have to struggle. We, we always like to, to, you know, have these struggle Olympics conversation. Or if you're of a educated, a formally educated class of people, you have something to say about somebody who may not have the same type of education you have or the same level of education you have. Those, those are more divisions I see in our community. Or if we talk about hair, right? There's a, there's a big hair debate that goes on so much in our community. We got to talk about hair constantly, especially the black woman's hair. This, I mean, this goes back to, to slavery. And we, we want to be seen and respected in a certain light, but we're having these public debates, these public conversations about our hair. We're having public conversations about different sects of our community. 
Oh, they're in the ghetto. Oh, they're in, a, they're in that white neighborhood. Or, oh, please, don't go over there. You go to her house, you're going to get robbed. Or, I mean, it's always something. It's always something. We divide each other when it comes to money. You know, some of us think we have money, and, and I'm not being funny. I'm not. I'm going to talk about that. What I mean, I'm going to talk about that in this video. But some of, some of us think we have money, and when we think we got a little bit, you know, a little bit of something, something in our pocket, we want to talk about the people who don't. Sometimes I believe that we're more anti-black than than other people outside of us, and that's frustrating for me. It goes back to that video I did, and I'm, I'm always making reference to it when I talk about intra-racial battle fatigue. It's tiring. It's tiring. So now we hear with this, this conversation about a bonnet, right? Somebody says, division has always been the biggest problem. Hey, Black Mama, Black Mama's on. Black Mama is saying, let's see what she's saying. Black Mama is saying... Understandable behavior exists in all, undesirable behavior exists in all communities, but we have been conditioned to associate it with our blackness, not just simply an aspect of human behavior in particular conditions. Absolutely. I could not have said it any better than that, Black Mama. Absolutely. And this is exactly where I'm going with this conversation. Divisions have happen in all communities. There are behaviors that are not desirable in all communities. There are issues when it comes to class, education, money, in all communities. But we just have this history and this habit of publicly highlighting these things. And then we think that it doesn't have any bearing on us. We think that it's just our conversation. It's not just our conversation. Let me go ahead and play for you guys before I can continue this conversation. I'm going to play for you guys. Um, here's, here's what um, somebody's saying here. It says symptom of the Willie Lynch syndrome. Or, or the, the, Winnie, the Willie Lynch complex is what she said. Right? But I'm going to play for you guys this video. Now, let me give you some insight to this video I'm about to play. And hopefully YouTube doesn't. Bing me, because you know how YouTube can be sometimes. But there's a video that I came across about this whole bonnet wearing thing. And it's done by a white man. And I'm not going to play the beginning of the video, but apparently somebody sent a question into his show. And he read the show about should black women, he, he read the question that was references whether or not black women should be wearing a bonnet. He called it a bonnet because he's probably like English or something. I don't know. He called it a bonnet, but a bonnet, 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 whatever. Same difference, different languages, right? But he read the question about whether black women should be wearing bonnets outside. And so he weighs in on this conversation. I find it particularly interesting because the question that he's, he was asked, can black women wear a bonnet in public and in the bedroom? Even though it doesn't have a lot of views on it, it has a, a little over 2,000 views. This man has 61,000 followers. And you guys who have been on YouTube, you know how YouTube works. The more people engage, the more videos you put out there, the more people share your content, content the more people give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down will indicate how much YouTube shows it to your audience. Your whole entire audience doesn't get to see it when you go live with it or when you upload it, but your whole entire audience, in including the world, has access to your video. So we know how this works. I scratched my head because I said, hmm. I mean, anybody can talk about any issue that they want to, right? But I scratched my head because I said, why is he talking about an issue such as the bonnets in a community, or the black community regarding the black woman? Then I said, why are we making it okay for him to be able to talk about these issues? Shout, shout out to Sid. Thank you so much for that. Sid says, a certain highly recognized VIP who makes her appearances wearing Burberry was dressed way, way down when I picked her up at the airport. 
Only difference was she wore a baseball cap instead of a bonnet. Otherwise, no difference. Right? Let me play this video for you guys. Because I want you guys to see what I'm talking about when I say when we're having these public conversations, other people are picking up on them. They're watching. They're weighing in. Whether they are letting you know they're watching or not, whether they're letting you know that they're having conversation about it or not, they are. They are. And I want you guys to, to really pay attention to that. So give me a second as I go ahead and get this video up. And hopefully you guys are going to be able to hear him. Give me a second, family. I have a little issue over here. Share my screen. I haven't shared my screen with you guys in so long. I feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Give me a second, beautiful family. Here we go. Found it. Here we go. Let me get this situated. Get this bigger. Make sure the volume's up. Make sure y'all be able to hear me. Hold on. Something is up. Were you able to hear that? Were you guys able to hear that video? I need y'all to let me know because I'm not sure if this thing is happening correctly. Okay, so you weren't able to hear it. Give me a second. I got to figure this out. Hmm. All right, family, let me try it again and see if you can hear it. I need y'all to be able to tell me if y'all can hear it. Give me a second. I know that in, in black culture. Uh, I don't know people, if the sound is coming uh, through. With women, rather. Uh, they wear those things because a lot their hair is curled. Uh, you know, white people do it too. Or not, not a nine guy. Were you able to hear it? I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. Just bear with me, family. Okay, you hear it. It's low, but you hear it. I don't think his volume was very high, but let me see. Um, bathrobe in his bathrobe and I thought you know I mean for me this seemed out of place but as it turned out the guy actually had a stretcher in his office where he slept so you know for, for, but for, for these people uh, apparently this is this is very normal so I know that in in black culture uh, people um, with women rather uh, they wear those things because a lot their hair is curled uh, you know white people do it too but uh, to for, like for them to just step outside with that in, in public, I guess it's more of a normal thing. But uh, non-black people, they look at that differently. They they see that as an abnormal scene. Like I said, I mean that the reason the reason why I said like for me it's not it's not a problem at all. For me, it's also not a turnout. Uh, but the reason why I say that is because I want to put that out there before I say the white people think uh, this or that. And I don't know how all white people think I don't. I really don't. But uh, yeah. So um, let's see at your question specifically. 
um, your thoughts about black women wearing hair bonnets to bed and also in public. You know, if, if she wants to do that because uh, she wants to style her hair in a certain way or uh, for whatever reason, maybe she wants to protect her hair uh, from, from breakage or <clears throat> from, from whatever, uh, from whatever. That's, that's fine with me, but I, I don't really know how to, like, I, I don't know how other, I, I mean, listen, listen, if you're a white guy and you date a black woman, if you've never dated, well, if let, let's 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 turn it around. If you have already dated black women, and they have certain customs, they, they, this this can be well. This may not be a custom, but um, this may be one of those things of different things that they do, or they do differently than white women. And that is something that that you accept, or or even even learn to love because that is part of dating a black woman, right? So if you have experience. That is just something that you do. Now, let's say you don't have experience. Okay, family, y'all can hear me fine. Y'all can hear me, family. I just want to, I just want to give y'all a little glimpse. It has nothing to do with what he said. I can care less about what he said. But it has everything to do with what I've been communicating in terms of how we're having these conversations publicly. And we're doing it in such a way that is not like a, a, a conversation that allows people to have their own opinions while conversing about issues in our community. We're doing it in such a way that we are putting each other down. We're doing it in a way that we're criticizing one another. We're doing it in a way that's that even though we say, I'm not trying to hurt you, but we are. We're making fun of our community. We're saying they're ghetto, they're ratchet, they're, they're that's what these poor people do, ignorant. We're calling them the N-word. You know, we're doing all these things. We're doing all these things. And when we're having these conversations, I've been saying it to you guys so many times that when we're having these conversations publicly, we are giving people insight into our community and it becomes weaponized against us. It becomes weaponized against us. For him, he probably likes black women, right? He probably had likes black women and you know, he's, he's probably not looking at it in a negative way. I can care less. I can care less if he liked black women and he wasn't looking at it in a negative way or if he hated black women and he was. That's not the point of that video. So don't get distracted. Right? Because it's, yeah, see, Def Rocker, I'm not saying he said anything wrong. This is what, this is what sometimes, and I'm not saying about you, Def Rocker. Just listen to what I'm saying. This is what annoys me sometimes about our community. Because when I put something like this out there, we went about, oh, now we want to debate. Well, you know, that doesn't prove anything. He didn't say anything wrong. This is not about him saying anything wrong or saying something right. That's This is not what that's about. The point is, he is having a conversation about something that is happening in our community that is not a public announcement for everyone else. He's having a conversation about something we're having in our community where we're, where we're arguing against each other and we're using language about each other that's not nice, that's not pop, um, positive, that's not productive. And so now someone else is weighing in. Let me ask you a question because I know some of y'all just don't get it. And I get it. Some of y'all just don't get it. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to say it to you differently because I want y'all to really think about this for a second. How many of us, listen to me, family, how many of us in our community, right? How many of us in our community have full out debates about things that, let's say, Asian people do that may be inappropriate for their culture? I want y'all to tell me. How many of us have public conversations about other people 
Like, so if we say it's not appropriate for an Asian woman to, I don't know, because I, I don't know what the hell is appropriate for an Asian woman to do and what's not appropriate because I don't, I don't worry about other people in their community, right? And I'm not trying to say it in a bad way. It's not a bad way whatsoever, but I'm saying we're talking about something that we feel in our community is not appropriate and it doesn't have a good representation for us in our community. What I'm asking you, for example, I got a good example for you guys. Let me, I don't know if I can get the picture, the image. I'll try to get the image, but if I can't get the image, it don't matter. But what I'm saying to you is how many of us, let's say Asian men who wear, let's say they wear locks in their hair. They got locks and maybe they're wearing some hip hop clothes and some flashy jewelry. Do any of us in our community talk about how their attire is inappropriate or a poor representation for their culture? Listen to what I'm saying, family. Don't, don't go off the rockers here. Don't go off the path. Do we say, well, you know, I just think that when Asian men are wearing locks in their hair and big jewelry in it, they're looking all hip hop. I just think it makes the Asian community look bad and they really shouldn't be outside wearing that. Okay, so y'all see what I'm saying, right? You see what I'm saying, right? We, we don't have dialogue about whether or not they're hurting their culture or their community by presenting themselves in ways that's not acceptable for their culture or community. Right, so now everyone's saying, no, we don't, no, never seen it, never. Okay, thank you, family, y'all there with me, right? You're following me. So when you see this video, when, we, when you see this video of this man, I can care less about what he said. You got to put it in context with what I am saying. He has now joined in on the conversation about what we are publicly conversing about that some of us do and whether or not it makes us collectively look bad. You see what I'm saying here, family? I mean... Do y'all see the bigger picture here? Do you see that we all must be socially responsible if we're going to move our community as a collective forward? We got to be socially responsible with some of these conversations. Right? That's right, Def Rocker. Def Rocker said we will only say that they're culturally appropriating. We're quick to say that, right? We're quick to say, oh, you you biting off our culture. I wish these, these culture vultures will find something for them to do for themselves. I'm tired of people wearing our kente cloth. I'm tired of people looking like us. We like to say that, but do we engage in dialogue about what is appropriate and what is inappropriate for their culture? That's my WC. WC says, because it got so much attention, it's transferred in white culture, right? You're right. And this is what I'm saying when I say we are putting it out there and then we're mad that somebody is weighing in. You made it public. These people, let's say Monique, for example. Monique, nothing against Monique, right? Monique has a large audience and her audience has diversity within it. Not only diversity within our community because there's diversity in our community, but her audience has diversity in other cultures as well. So now we're out there and we're talking and this is, they feel, and rightfully so they are on her, on her social media channels. They feel, meaning the, the others, right? They feel that they are a part of her community. So whatever she puts out there, some of them are bold enough to feel that they can weigh in on it because they are they support her and they are a part of her community. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of us looking at it that way, we all weigh in. 
and we're writing all these blogs. Now, you know, social media can be a blessing or a curse. We are writing all these blogs. We are taken to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're saying all the stuff about this whole bonnet wearing. This is why I say sometimes I believe we are more anti-black. We as a community are more anti-black than other people. Not that they don't have their issues. I'm saying we are, we, oh, I can't right now. Yeah, so let me say this. There are distinct differences in our community. And we, we have such a problem acknowledging that. We have such a problem. We, we always want to say we, we, we. The only time there is a we when our asses are fighting to move us forward, then there's a we. But we're, we're not all the same. And I say this in my, my videos quite often because I really want us to hear that. And I really want us to know that it is okay for us to be different. We are out here having this conversation about this whole bonnet thing. And it made me sit back and it made me ask myself, of course, right? It made me ask myself, but would we be treated differently collectively by others if we all look the same or we all look at what somebody is deeming is appropriate for us? Would we all be treated differently? Would we be treated with a lot more respect if we dressed more American? Or if we always looked like we was going to church Monday through Sunday because we were all always dressed up? Would we be treated any differently? Let me see what you're saying. I want to see what you, you have to say. Will we be treated any differently? If we, if we, none of us wore bonnets on our hair. Our hair was always done. We're all clean shaven. We all look the same way. We're all dressed up. Would we be treated differently? Do you think we will be treated with respect? Do you think we'll be treated like, like humans? Do you think that we would not get subpar education? We would not get a subpar health system. Do you think that we will be treated differently? All right. So most people say no, hell no, hell to them now. No, 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 no is what people are saying. So then let me ask you something. Listen, I, I don't have an opinion. If you, if you want to wear a bonnet, wear a goddamn bonnet. Do, do whatever the hell you want to do. Just get in line to fight for us when we're asking for certain things, right? <laughs> but let, let me say this. See, hold on a second. I'm going to join into this conversation too. Let me put her conversation on the, the um, board because I'm going to join into this conversation too. But give me a second. If we're not going to be treated differently and we all look the part of what was considered normal or acceptable or whatever the hell you guys want to say, whatever. If we're not going to be treated differently, why does these women that everyone is talking about and criticizing, why, why does it matter that they have a bonnet on their head? How, how is that hurting you? If we're not, whether we have a bonnet on our head, a baseball cap, our hair relaxed, our hair weaved, our hair kinky, you know, locked hair, loose natural hair, if we have baldies, if we have a beard, if we're not going to be treated differently, no matter how much we try to clean it up, what's the big deal about her or women having bonnets on their head? Who is it hurting? Is it really about the bonnets? Who, who is it hurting? And I'm not trying to be funny. I, I need us to look at ourselves for a second because we need to be able to identify what anti-blackness looks like among us. Who is that hurting? If we're not going to be treated, let's, let's follow the bouncing ball. If we are not going to be treated differently, regardless of how we look, who is it hurting? Now we're talking about as a collective. We're not talking about individually if you're not going to be treated differently, right? Because that depends on as an individual where you go, where you live, unfortunately, your education, unfortunately, your class, unfortunately, your access to capital, your access to, to networks, your access to support, your access to resources, all of that stuff determines a lot in our, in our society, period. No matter what society you're from, no matter if you're white, black, it doesn't matter. And in society, period, that stuff 
plays a major role in America because the way American society was set up and where it is when it comes to capitalism. So that plays a different role. But if it's not going to make a difference for us collectively, why, why does it bother you that these women are outside with bonnets? So I'm going to get to your questions. And, I mean, your answers in a question. I mean, in a second. But let me read what Black Mama is saying to Def Rocker. They're having a conversation. She says that she agrees with De Def Rocker. But she says she said it with loving correction. Unfortunately, they're spying eyes and ears of other people that then see it as an invitation to dominate the conversation. Much love to you. Okay. In that respect, yeah, I, I see it. But here's, here's the reason why I highlighted your response, Black Mama, because the word loving correction caught me. But I'm saying correction, correction. Ugh. I get what you're saying, Black Mama. I'm just having a problem with the word correction. I'm having a problem with that because we're correcting it to whose standard? To who? To whose standard? Let's talk about this for a second because I hear what a lot of people, a lot of you guys are saying. Somebody's saying, next thing you know, they'll be wearing it to work. You know, and if, and if guess what? Guess what, Afro and Afro Sheen? If they start wearing it to work, then don't you think that that's an employer issue and not a uh, uh, you're bringing down a black community issue, right? Because I don't know about you, but I notice when anti-blackness is present. As y'all can see, my hair is locked, right? But it doesn't stop me from getting contracts. It doesn't stop me from speaking. It doesn't stop me from people wanting to do interviews with me. Most people I turn down because I just don't have the time. But it doesn't stop It doesn't stop any of that. It doesn't stop me from being contracted as a clinician. It doesn't stop me from doing the work that I do. It doesn't stop me from engaging with a multitude of people who contract me for different reasons. And when I say a multitude, I'm talking about all types of people, government, officials. I'm talking about white organizations, depending on what they want to bring me in for. I, I, I get contracted all the time by a particular organization, a white one in, in New, New Jersey to do HIPAA, HIPAA training and data breach and security training when it comes to social workers and clinicians and how we must make sure we protect our patients' information. They bring me in all the time and they pay me to talk to their audience and teach their social workers and their organization about HIPAA so they won't get violated by the federal government. I come and I say that. So my, my locks doesn't stop it, right? So when I say, isn't that an employer issue? Them wearing bonnets don't affect my cash. Now I'm an Aquarius. I always say it, but you know, we like, we like our paper. We like, we like our money. We like to get the paper. You hear what I'm saying? And them wearing a bond, it doesn't, doesn't stop my, my paper. So that's why I don't give two flying F-U-C-Ks if they wear a bond. It don't, it don't stop my flow. Them wearing a bonnet, like to Rick and she said, oh, well, I, I could just tell I'm in the ghetto. Okay, maybe you can and maybe you cannot. I don't know. Because I live in, in a suburban area. And if I was to go to a town that maybe had more blacks than my town, Let's say like Teaneck, New Jersey. I see people in Teaneck, New Jersey wearing bonnets all the time, but their houses that they own are, you know, $450,000 and up. And their kids be out there with bonnets on and they go away to college and, and they graduate high school and they come from two parent households and they, they buy their kids cars for graduation. And I see it all. So like them wearing a bonnet don't stop my flow. Maybe it stops your flow. I don't know. It, it don't stop my flow. It don't stop my flow. But see, here's let me let me let me let right. You you right, Mrs. Mahogany. I'm gonna say that. Let me respond to um lightning strikes. So lightning strikes says some of these women wearing bonnets don't have your credentials, business acumen, or professionalism. We need to stop making excuses for them. You're, you're not hearing what I am saying. I'm not making excuses for anybody. I'm saying I don't have a small mind, so I don't discuss people. That's what I'm saying. I discuss ideas. I, I, I discuss solutions. Me 
going out there, having a public critical debate that is damaging and allowing other people outside of our community to weigh in. Me having that conversation don't stop them from wearing bonnets. That's the point I'm making. It don't stop them from wearing bonnets. It's a lot of shaming, but you know, we're great at that in our community. We're great with publicly shaming each other. We're, we're excellent at that. It doesn't, it doesn't stop it. So how is this helpful? Who is sitting these women down and saying to these women, okay, let's have a conversation. How come you wearing bonds? Are you concerned about how people may look at you or how, um, you know, you might get, are, are we having critical dis discourse, critical thinking discourse, or are we displaying criticism? There's a difference. Are we having critical thinking discourse or are we perpetuating shaming? We got to get out of our emotions and we got to really think this through. We can't be on here and say, listen, we got to get on call. We got to get, what does that mean? When will we get to a place where we just accept our differences? When will we get to a place where we just accept our differences? We can have critical discourse about the bonnet. I don't know if they wear it to church or not. Maybe they don't go to church. And that's why I'm saying we're making a lot of these assumptions and we're putting everybody in our own boxes. These are the boxes for you. It has nothing to do with them. This is your box. This is how you live your life. This is how you have your standards. And when we start putting our standards on other people, we become like our oppressors. Let me say that again. I'm going to say it in a different way. When we start saying what somebody should or shouldn't do and what's right and what's wrong because we don't like the way it looks to us because we don't like, think about what we're saying because we don't like the way it looks to us, but we don't pay their bills. We don't give these people employment. Most of us don't because, you know, we're not the greatest employers here in America. So we're damn sure ain't giving them jobs. We're not giving them health benefits. We're not paying their rent. We're not, we're not doing that. And if you say, yeah, we are because they're unwealthy, then that means you're making an assumption. And once again, you became like your oppressor. Okay, somebody told me to check my super chat. Give me a second. I'm sorry. Let me go on my super chat. Got to find it. Got to find it. So many messages coming and I'm just trying to, you know, talk to y'all. I'm missing something. What did I miss? Okay. The Swoovia says, this is a super chat. Give me one second. The Swoovia says, I'm aware, I'm aware some of, a, of the pushback to bonnets is due to some of us drawing a correlation between them and the misnomer of hair rollers and bathrobes look. Okay. All right. Granted. And if somebody came outside with hair rollers and, you know, a bathrobe, how does it affect you? That's what I'm saying. Like, how does it hurt you? If somebody is in an Asian beauty supply store, let's just, we're going to talk. Let's just have a real honest conversation, people. If somebody is in an Asian beauty supply store with a bonnet or rollers and a bathrobe, how does that affect you? They're in an Asian beauty supply store. They're in the Chinese food restaurant. They are in the pizza shop. How does that affect you? And the swoovie is I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the audience. I'm talking in general. How does that affect you? They're not in your business. They're not giving you their money. <laughs> They're not doing anything for your ass. How does that affect you? Can somebody please critically answer that for me? They're not in your nail salon getting their nails done with you. 
They're not getting their eyebrows waxed or threaded with you. How does that affect you? Because you don't like the way it looks. That's why. Yeah, black Americans do feel that we all represent one another and we don't. Okay, so here's what my um, YouTube husband is saying. He said it makes the team look bad. Okay, great. Let's stop right there. I'm glad you said that. Let's stop right there. What team are you talking about? What team are you talking about? Because I'm very clear that we're not all the same. So what team are you talking about? We don't all have the same culture. Culture is our way of life, right? How we go about doing things. That's what culture is. We don't all have the same culture. So what team are you talking about? We don't all have the same language. We don't all speak the same way. We don't all understand dialect the same way. Even though we all speak English, we, we don't all have the same language. So what team are you talking about? We don't all have the same customs. So what team are you talking about? We're not all the same ethnicities. So what team are you talking about? Eric says, it doesn't affect us per se, but I can guarantee the Asians will be laughing at us and talking in their language. Here we go, Eric. Here we go, Eric. You think they're not laughing at you and talking about you and your Asian and your and their language? If you came into their salon and maybe you are, I don't know, a doctor, since y'all like to have classism and stuff, right? You're a doctor. You come into the establishment, you take off your feet and your feet stink. You don't think they're going to be talking about you? Or you come into their salon and you decked out in all luxury and they're doing your nails. And I don't know if you know that or not, but the Vietnamese people, just because they're doing nails, don't mean they, they got paper. They struggle. They, they got a lot of classism in their culture as well, right? They, they financially struggle. They, they're doing better than us. But those nail salon people and Chinese food restaurant people, they're looked down by the more affluent Asian people or the more middle class people. They look down at them. They don't just go public with it. They don't talk about you, talk about them so that we can hear it. But if you go to their blogs, they're having conversation about wealth and um, economics all the time. And they're, they talk about the, the wide wealth gap that exists within their community. This is this a uh, a guy that was on CBS News. His name is Brian Chen. He talks a, about the wealth gap in their community and how they are an invisible si uh, society because America always highlights their wealth collectively as an Asian community highlights their wealth. And what happens is the people that are at the bottom is a lot of them in their community at the bottom. They're invisible. Everyone assumes that they got money too, but they struggle and they get welfare too, and they're piling up in, in their apartments and in their houses with each other too, or they don't have home ownership either. Like they, they struggle too, right? So if you're saying that because somebody has on a bonnet, if you go into an Asian market, they're going to talk about you because you have on a bonnet. Baby, if you go into an Asian market, they're going to talk about you anyway. <laughs> you should probably stay at a lot of their businesses, period. So I'm not saying they all going to talk about you, but they're going to talk about you anyway. So I don't think that's a solid argument, in my opinion. No, the moral of the story, women are, what is your name? Women are perfect, deal with it. The moral of the story isn't stop caring about black people, don't say anything. That's not the moral of the story. I don't, I don't agree with that. I think the moral of the story is, it goes back to the conversation I was having about the white guy that is is addressing black women in a bonnet on his YouTube channel where he has 61,000 subscribers. That's the moral of the story. And here's somebody saying, I'm enabling. How am I enabling? How am I enabling? What power do I have over the bonnet wearing community? How am I enabling? Am I enabling or are you controlling? 
Am I enabling or are you controlling? Because if I had a young woman in my presence and she is being mentored by me, I would have a discussion with her about going outside in certain ways. And I would ask her, what are you hoping to attract when you're outside? What do you, where, where do you want to go in life? What do you want to be? You know, how much money do you want to make? What community do you want to live in? And I would start to coach on, coach her on how, if she puts that out there, she might not get what she's looking for. So there's certain images and how images can be powerful in certain situations, depending on what you're going for. If you're going for a business contract, you might have to look a certain way. You might have to speak a certain way. You might have to take the earring out your lip. There might be different things that you have to do. Now, if I was mentoring her, then she becomes my responsibility. But you're saying I'm enabling? I don't have the power or the control to enable an entire population of people. So how am I enabling them? We make these comments and I don't think we give it much thought. So answer that question. How am I enabling the bonnet wearing community? Right? What I am saying is we got to we got to learn how to have some tolerance. We got to learn to have some tolerance of people who are different than us. We're not all the same. We haven't been all the same historically. So somebody says it's not about bonnets, it's about standards. And again, I'm going to ask you. I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm going to ask you again. Whose standards? Whose standards? We can't just keep making these, these comments. Whose standards? Because let me tell you why it doesn't affect me. Let me tell you why it doesn't affect me. Because the bonnet wearing community, my children won't marry into. So it don't bother me. Not trying to be funny. Okay, here it is. Here it is. I'm, I'm going to challenge all of y'all. I don't mind it. I have all day. I got the smoke. My YouTube husband says it's kind of like wearing pajamas in public. Have you gone? To, have you come to my town? You know where I live. You know the community I live in. You said you pass by it all the time. Do you want to go to Fort Lee High School and see how those kids dress? You Do you know that black people are only 6 or 7% of the population in this town? So you can only imagine that the population in my high school in this town is ran by Asians and, and whites. And do you know they wear pajamas to school? Do you know that? Do you know that, that they wear pajamas to school? Yes, I am. Yes, I am, Tenye. Absolutely, I am. Point the fingers back at yourselves. Who standard are we talking about? We don't all have standards. This is like me saying, okay, you may say it's lame. Um, you may say it's lame, but, th but the point is, it's a cultural thing. And we don't like to make contingencies or accept people and their cultures when it's different from us. How are we any different from our oppressors? It's a cultural thing. This is their accustomed to what they're used to doing in their community. It is how they operate in their community. It, it don't affect me. And it doesn't hurt me either. And it doesn't make my children look bad either. Do you know what culture means? See, I'm, I'm going to have to educate you and help you out. Do you know what the word culture means? First, look up the definition of culture. I'm trying to help you out. So now we're talking about laziness. So now we're saying that everyone that wears bonnets are lazy. Y'all sound like white people. This shit is just anti-black. Period. Period. 
That's right, eye to eye. They talk different and talk different in different places. It's their, that's why somebody said way of life. That's what culture is. It's a way of life. It's behaviors that are passed down to you of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. It's acceptable in their culture. It's not acceptable in my culture. It's acceptable in their culture. Who am I to go in there and say, you guys are dis despicable? It don't help. It don't help me get reparations. It don't help me get reparations. We went from wearing scarves on our head to wearing bonnets on our head. Listen, we have so many isms in our community. The division just brings about so many isms. We got intra racism, intra, intra, intra. Not, not I'm not talking about inter. We already know that we got intra. We got classism in our community. We got sexism in our community. We got so many isms. And we mad. We mad at everybody else. We mad at everybody else. We do the same goddamn things. We do the same goddamn things. We become our oppressors. And many of us do it. But how many of us will acknowledge it? We will have so many reasons and justifications and explanations for why we're not the same as our oppressors. We are. We are. Our conditioning... Our social engineering, it works against us, right? It works against our progress altogether. I went on and I was trying to find video after video after video of other people criticizing their, their community publicly. And I, I, I don't come across those videos often. I don't come, work, I don't come, come across those public videos often. Yeah, so it's not about the bonnet at all. So then let's not talk about the bonnet. What is it about? What are you really saying? You're going to say, oh, because they don't have pride in themselves? Listen, I can't sit up there and tell you their culture is different. A lot of them, they got pride. Not the pride that I would have, but they got pride in some of them things that they do. Black man, shout out to black man. Black man says, you think people who don't have enough pride to compose their appearance will have enough pride to show up and fight for the race. And, and that's what, guess what? Did I say, I think that, or that's what you think? I'm, I didn't say, I didn't say, I think that because if you've been with me for a while, black man, then you would know, you would know that I have said a number of times when we win this fight, everyone is going to benefit, but not everyone's going to be a part of this fight. I don't have time to waste my energy with small shit. It's small. I don't got time to waste my energy there. Classism is always going to exist in this country. It's going to be the have and the have nots always in this country. There's going to be the, the sharecropper and the elite always in this country. It's going to be the enslaved Negro and the free Negro always in this country. It's going to be the illiterate versus the literate always in this country. But has the illiterate, the sharecropper, the enslaved, has it stopped us from moving forward? We may not have made the kind of progress we would like to see collectively as a whole, but we have started the process of arguing. We're still fighting. We're still not started the process. We are continuing the, the process of fighting. We are continually getting more of our children literate, getting more of our children educated. We are continuously building businesses. We're continuously learning about real estate, learning about wealth. We're continuously joining conversations that can help our children for generations to come. I'm not worrying about what they're doing and what they're not doing. They're going to exist forever. Because it is seen in all cultures and all communities. There is poverty and weird behavior and subculture behavior in all communities. You think I'm wasting my time thinking about what they're doing and what they're not doing? I'm not weaponizing my community so more white men could take, take, take to YouTube and make videos about black women wearing bonnets. I done showed y'all the video. And there's more out there. I can show you more conversations that white people be having about the conversations we be having about each other. I can show you that.
Yes, the public strip club thing is not the same thing. The public strip club thing in the park is not the same thing. See, sexualizing and hypersexualizing black women in the presence of little black girls is not the same thing as your ass going outside of a bonnet. It's not the same thing. And guess what? A lot of these strippers don't wear bonnets outside per se. A lot of these strippers come out in their Chanel bags that cost them about six six thousand dollars, right? If you don't buy Chanel, if you don't if you don't buy Louis, if you don't buy those 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 designer bags at that, those levels, you ain't gonna know those kind of prices. But they're like Chanel bag, easy, six thousand dollars, no problem, right? And they'll come out because I see them all the time. They'll come out. They'll have Porsches. They'll have Beamers, Benzes, fancy bags, $200 nails, designer shoes, designer clothes. They're strippers. This is not, a, this is not about a goddamn bonnet. The Swoovie is saying, I get what you're saying, sis. We have to stay focused on the goal because they are always going to throw distractions at us because we are easily persuaded all the time. All the time. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You got to know stats. You got to know statistics to really prove this. The problem is this depraved behavior spreads through our community and becomes part of the popular culture. Doesn't affect my household. Don't you think that's an individual family thing? So bonnets, bonnets is going to spread through our community and it's going to hurt us, right? So that means that your children video 60 and I, I don't know who you are so don't get offended but that means that your children are now all of a sudden going to be you know they're going to overlook all of your teaching and, and your upbringing and and your education when you're educating them on what it means to be a black person in america and how they must go out there and find their lane in order to help their community they're going to now wear bonnets outside that's what you're telling me your children going to now wear bonnets outside Is that what you're telling me? Absolutely. That's right. White people do worse things, right? And there goes the Swivius. Thank you, the Swivius. The Swivius says what you're talking about, stereotypes and misnomers, is anti-blackness. It's oppression talk. It's what it is. Right? Here it goes. Here it goes. Listen to it. This is the ignorance in our community. Miss Price. Well, she don't give a shit about nothing but her household. That means she a scam artist fraud. You see what I'm talking about? I can't help these people. Miss Price, what have I scammed people of? How am I a fraud? What am I doing that's fraudulent? Can you tell me? Can you tell me, Miss Miss Price, what I have frauded you out of? What I have sold you, Miss Price? Can you tell me? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I say small minds. Small minds. Small minds. Can you tell me? Can anyone tell me? What I frauded anybody out of. See what I mean? That's right. That's right, soul man. Miss, Miss Price is probably a mister doing ignorant shit. So we should talk about, we should talk about ignorant people like Miss Price. Now that's a danger to the community, not the bonnet. Her ass is a danger to the community. Right. This is what this is what we do. That's an example of toxin for the community. That's an example. Soul man says too much anti-blackness in the chat this evening. People need to look at themselves and work on themselves first. Absolutely. You know, I ain't beat. Right. Right. Here it goes. But they don't want to talk about this. They don't want to talk about this. Malston says, when are we as a community will stop acting to satisfy the white gaze? They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about that. 
because they don't want to see it that way because so many people like to feel better than other people. You want to feel better that you don't wear a bonnet. So you're better and though they're diseased and, and, and they, you worrying about a bonnet, a bonnet, a bonnet. Can we, can we, if you're still worried about bonnets on people's heads, if you're still worried about it, can y'all go into these communities and pick a person or two to mentor? Can you do that? Can you go? Oh, so now video six and say I'm not a fraud, but I'm wrong on this topic. Topic, but I'm wrong. You see what I'm saying with this community? Because I don't agree with you. I'm wrong. <laughs> so let me ask you something, Miss Video Sixty. Since I'm so wrong on this topic, Miss Video Sixty. So this is the ele this is the elevated conversation. I break beyond pettiness. You got to. If you're so bothered about the bonnet. Go into those communities, dedicate your Saturdays or your Sundays, set up shop, get people to sign up, give them a free program and teach them class and etiquette. Don't talk about them. Go do something. You talking about them to do what? Go into their community, sign your young girls up. It's going to be hard at first. And you know why I know? Because I do it. I do it. Go into the community. It's going to be hard at first. People are going to, you know, fall off. Some of your girls might get in arguments and fights there, right? They might get in arguments and fights in a program, and you're just going to have to teach them things and rules. But just go there, show up for them, be there for them consistently, not sometime, consistently. There's a, there's a whole bunch of nonprofit organizations and a lot of inner city communities around the globe that they love. They, they look for people to come in to provide a service because they're trying to provide services and resources that scares grants get cut. Money's not available for the staff to do it. You can, you can always go into one of these programs. I do it, baby. You go to my page on, on Facebook, my, my business page, my counseling page, you'll see it. We haven't done it for the two years of COVID, but we do it. We go in there. We teach. We have the beauty pantry for women, for women who used to have addictions, particularly drug addictions. And we educate them on financial health. We educate them on self-esteem. We educate them on self, um, self-appearance. We do resume writing with them. And this is free. You can go to any organization and pitch it. And how we live off of that is from donations. When people give me donations, that's how I get my students, my, my interns that come in from the university and they, they get this as a project. That's their project to take on. They get donations in for everywhere. We get donations. If any of you guys have been following me on that page, you have seen the donations that we give. I have a, a storage unit full of donations from different name brand health beauty and wellness products everywhere. And at the end of the program, they all get a gift bag and I put different things in it. We explain to them what some of the items are and how to use them. But they they do it and you'd be surprised. These women want to know. They want to know. I've taught them about credit. I taught them how what a secure credit card is versus a insecure, a unsecure credit card. Teach them about all that stuff. They want to know that. You can go ahead and do that. When I posted it on my YouTube community channel about the women who had completed that program, and I, I had made a mention, a comment was, I put this program in a hood that was diverse between Blacks and, and Hispanics. And only one Black woman showed up. My whole class was Hispanic. And through my Spanish speaking, or Spanglish is what I should say, and somebody else's, we was able to do a class. I graduated I think it was like 20 something, almost 30 women out that class. You could do it. You can do it. We have the superpower program for the kids. We have school age. We have um, preteens for middle school. And then we have the high school students. And we teach them conflict resolution. It's a free program. It's a free program. We teach them conflict resolution. And we set our rules and we teach them how to eat. We teach them diet. We teach them all that stuff. You can do it. You can do it. See, Eric, we don't have to all agree with each other. I just gave you a comment to the disagreement. I don't care if you don't agree with me. I'm saying take y'all black asses 
into the community and do the work. It's easy to be on YouTube, social media, Facebook. It's easy to be on these channels and criticizing people. If you don't like it, go into the community and change it. Go into the communities and change it. And that's an example of how our community looks. We always got something to say. There's always a problem. You are the solution. Go and change it. You don't want them wearing bonnets? Go do something about it. You don't want them killing each other? Put together mentoring programs for these black boys and do something about it. Step up and be fathers to these black boys and do something about it. Somebody always got something to say. Do the goddamn work. Do the work. You tired of it? Do something about it. It's not going to happen overnight. You got to show up for free. You got to show up for free. And you got to do the work. You got to do the work. I love y'all. I ain't got nothing else to say. Somebody's... <laughs> <laughs> Cocoa Butter, you made me laugh. I like that Cocoa Butter. Hold a second. Cocoa Butter said, say it loud enough for the GED section in the back, Doc. <laughs> Woo! That's my silk, uh, silk teen. None of them are, are not going, to Dr. Shauna. They think they're better than a bonnet wearers, right? Mm hmm. Always got something to say. Anti blackness, that's the point. That's the point. But you know something? Somebody says, hey, when you when you say do something, crickets is all we all you will hear. I get what you're saying. However, sometimes you will get cursed out or beat down. That's okay. That's okay. Listen, no one said being on this on this chair in this chair is not gonna come with criticisms and beat down. We ain't gotta agree with each other. I don't care. Do the work. Do the work. That's it. That's the point I'm saying. That's the point I'm saying. Do the work. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm like, oh, Lord, here come the ninjas. Then I'm like, oh, my God, Lord Jesus, that came out of my mouth. Rephrase it. Open up your mind. Engage. Interact. Don't make assumptions. Get that white programming, get that white conditioning, that white brainwash, that white social engineering out of your head, change the conversation. Change. That's what you got to do. We all do it. But but so many of us don't want to admit to what we're doing. I can admit to it. I can admit that sometimes I fall short. I can admit to it. But nobody, no one wants to admit to it. Everybody else is perfect. You're, you're perfect. Perfect beings. Perfect beings. Do the work. That's right. That's right. You got to meet people where they are. Meet them where they are. Thank you for being honest, eye to eye. Thank you for, he said, I fell short many times. We all do it. Sometimes I'm sitting in the restaurant, I'm trying to mind my business, have fun. And then of course, of course, some people are just louder than others. And sometimes my eye to twitch. And then I say, nope, mm -mm. you got to You got to know when white supremacy is showing up in your head. You, nope, nope. Let them people be. They just having fun and, and they're eating. And if, 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 listen, if they want to be loud and it bothers you, go ahead and leave the restaurant. You ain't got to stay there. Go ahead and leave the restaurant. Right? Shamika said, exactly. Complaining and criticizing only makes you part of the problem. So instead of causing extra drama about it, create solutions and solution and facts, right? Right. We all do it. But if you're not, if you're not going to 
look at yourself and, and examine your thoughts and be honest about some of your own thinking when you see other people and you see them doing things that is different than what you would normally do, right? If you don't examine your own thoughts, we're never going to get ahead because we're always going to have an eye of the vision. But again, like I said, we're all different. We're not all the same. There's, there's people that don't, don't like me and that's, that's cool. And there's people that make assumptions about me all the time. That's cool, but I'm doing the work. Somebody said, Doc, I love how you hit 100 miles an hour and coast at 50. Because, you know, sometimes you got to hit 100 miles an hour in this community. Right? Sometimes you got to hit 150 miles an hour and, and coast down to 25. Sometimes. Right? Just, it, exactly. You know, just, just talk about what it does to you. Talk about how it bothers you. Mimi says, every time I, I hear or see bonnets, unfortunately, it reminds me of Mrs. Jackson. Listen, but just talk about what it does for you. These are your thoughts that it, it impacts you. Right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. None of us are perfect. We all fall short. We're all for sure. We got to make we got to make room and give people grace. We got to make room and give people grace. Because it's, it's a lot of work when you're fighting other people and fighting your own people. It's a lot of work. And not everyone not everyone is going to be in the game. We're going to have a lot of bench players, and they're all going to benefit from the team. It's a lot of bench players that never make it off the bench, but they still get to take pictures with the team when the team wins, right? But I don't hear about going around saying, oh, those players are lazy. That's why they ain't in the play. They lazy. No, they're just, the, you know, they, they may just be the weaker link. And we got to do the work for them. We got to do the work for them. That's it. They made it to the team, but they're just not good enough to be in the game, right? They got to sit on the bench, but it doesn't mean they, they don't bring value. They bring something to the team. They bring something to the team. Now, again, you guys see bonnets. Y'all see ratchetness. Y'all see ghetto. But the people who come into our communities and buy it up, they see money. Y'all see ridiculous, poor, low class, making us look bad, blighted, blighted community. But the Asian people see feet in their, their tubs and money in their pockets. You see it as you loud, ratchet, ghetto so-and-so. But the Jewish people that own all the houses in that community see it as rent roll and wealth. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, family, I'm out. If you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you can know when I'm coming on live. Give the video a thumb up. Give the video a thumbs down. I don't care what you do. Just engage with the video. Keep the comments coming in the chat. And when I'm finished with this video, go ahead and put the, the comments in the comment section. We all love to have the conversation. We don't all have to agree with each other. And that's the beauty of moving forward. We don't have to agree with each other, but we got to do the work. I don't care how mad you get and how much you disagree, do the work, right? Because if you don't do the work at your job, you ain't going to get a paycheck, right? If we don't do the work, we ain't going to get results. We're not going to get results. Do the work. I don't care if you don't agree. Do the work, right? You can come up and say, well, I don't, I don't like this job. Like somebody says, that's right. Not easily moved. Says, show up or shut up. Show up or shut up. No one cares if you like the job or not. Listen, family, if you are not on Instagram, you need to get on Instagram and follow me there. I talk about nothing but relationships over on Instagram. I wanted you guys to be a part of that conversation. I'm going to be bringing on different people that um, are in the relationship arenas as well. And I'm bringing them on as guests in my show. I already did one with Mr. Let Go on Instagram. If you don't know who he is, I suggest you go to Instagram and look at Mr. Let Go. Some of you guys will agree with him. Some of you guys will not agree with him. Some of you guys are going to like him. Some of you guys don't like him. But, you know, whether we agree with it or not, he has a different demographic that he serves than I do, but you know something? He's doing the work for his community and they like him. So I put him on because maybe he can reach some people in my community. Let's, let's just share it. I'm going to be bringing on somebody else called a toxic dating coach, the toxic dating coach. And he teaches women how to do things to 
make men behave right. <laughs> and he gives away all the tricks. And he's going to be coming on, I believe he's going to be coming on Monday night. So tomorrow night, he'll be on my Instagram channel. I'm going to be interviewing him so you guys can learn a little something, something from him as well. So if you're not on Instagram, I suggest you go over to Instagram, follow me there, become a part of that community. Thank you so much for all your donations that come in that to support Black Media, support the channel. Thank you to all my new members and subscribers to the channel. I love every last one of you guys. It's okay that we don't always agree, but we're going to have this dialogue. We're going to have this discussion. I'm not here to be like the love. I'm here to deliver a message. Have a great one. Be blessed. And I look to see all of you guys on Friday with Mental Health Fridays. Be good.